How's it going, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to the playoff semifinal slash division final. I'm gonna stick to it, okay? Because it's like actual sports. Uh, roundup, weekly roundup of in the EB, in the EBL that made zero sense, but we're just gonna move on from that. Uh, this week sucked. <laughs> this week really sucked, okay? Um, we had two big wins from the two favorites. So to be real here, the two teams that I think everyone expected to be in the finals, or at least everyone expected to be very close to the finals. Uh, and sure enough, and sure, yeah, I mean, they're here. They, they made it. They both made it, and they both did it very convincingly, um, both walking away with the same scoreline in their matches. Um, but before we get into all that you guys absolutely need to go check out all the coaches down below in particular check out always more videos on Guanaco gaming that is where the championship matches are going to be from both point of views it's, it's one match but you know both point of views so they are the ones you want to watch this saturday for the championship match for season two uh as Gunako goes for his second straight trying to build a nice little dynasty here uh whereas kentucky is trying to you know build on an excellent season that they've had as well uh and trying to cap it off with a win there um so yeah you guys want to check those two out for the championship match of course check out everyone else in the league as well i am still not joined by it's really to me be um he'll be back he should be back to uh be a part of the final weekly roundup for the championship match um but for now belly is still here of course hi belly in the comments as per usual uh and yeah let's get right into it uh so we're only gonna go over one match this week uh we're not gonna talk about the la versus kentucky match because it, it's uh it's irrelevant so moving on no i'm just kidding of course we, we have to talk about it uh kentucky walked away with a 6-2 win over the la inferno um and i'm not gonna lie i'm not really mad that i lost in that way i'm mad at myself for making the big mistake of uh forgetting the right rotom moveset uh it was just hard to swallow um and i could have made a couple different plays in hindsight you know i could have made a couple different plays in our match despite not having the right rotom but at the end of the day the rotom would have made a massive difference um dialga did walk away with a mega mvp racking up three kills nearly almost almost set it up for a sweep i was very surprised that Dracovish actually outsped it to kill it um maybe i shouldn't have been because maybe derek wasn't built into speed um i, I was uh, I, I can speak freely i'm not pokemon i built into now since i'm not gonna be playing so um yeah my draco wish is built into attack and speed so i was kind of expecting it to outspeed i was also i also like wouldn't have been surprised because dialga is is it's fairly it, it can be fast depending on how you build it but i have a feeling derek's is built more specially and maybe more bulky physically um I definitely special. I could definitely see it built into the special attack. Um, has to be because he uses only uh, special moves. Um, I was not expecting ancient power. That's a great, you know, a great play on Derek's part. A great, a great move change. He actually pointed out that, uh, and I noticed as well that he brought the same exact team, uh, or at least I'm pretty sure it's the same exact team or near same exact team. Um, however, the move sets on a lot of those Pokemon were very different. So it's clear that Derek was trying to, you know, catch me off guard. It's clear he was trying to come up with something, you know, different and unique. Um, and to a certain degree, it worked. Uh, I mean, not to a certain degree. It worked. It worked. It worked. It threw me off. But, uh, and this is not to take anything away from Derek. He played well. He did what he had to do. Um, I kind of mentally checked out uh, very early into that match. Uh, that's where I say, you know, if I had maybe focused, the scoreline could have been closer. But uh, I was a little crybaby, a little B. Um, I'm not gonna say the word, <laughs> uh, and I just mentally checked out like a, like an idiot. Um, it was just really annoying. I wasn't really mad. I was just annoyed. I think I was just really annoyed that I forgot um, the Rotom. I've been so distracted lately with all the little stuff I got going on. So, I'm not surprised. Oops, I hit my mic. Not surprised that I brought the wrong one. Um, but again, Derek did what he had to do, and I'm gonna say it again. I said it last week. I'm gonna say it again. Derek, do not feel bad for winning. You know, did not feel bad. Uh, it was my mistake. It is what it is. You know, I got to deal with it. Uh, and, you know, this is the third time I've had to revisit this match this week. And it sucks. But it's okay. You know, it is what it is. Um, it's just, it just sucks knowing uh, that I could have been in the finals. Because, an interesting little note, for those of you who might not have watched my side or even may not have watched the full video. Um, we actually did rematch immediately after that. Uh, and I won. I won 5-4, it ended, uh, he had Ferrothorn and I had Corviknight and guess who? Rotom. Rotom actually would have survived all the way to the end and 
I'm going to point out that it did kill Cinderace. It was responsible for Cinderace dying. Um, it was responsible for Cinderace dying. Uh, and it was, it, it lived and it would have won me the match, uh, you know, because it stayed alive. So, uh, Derek ended up quitting because I was just roosting and substituting on him and bulking up. So there's no way his fair turn was going to kill my core Um, and yeah, like I said, Rotom was one of the last Pokemon left. So if, if I said it in that video, you know, I say it here again, if you guys are questioning how much of a difference that Rotom would have made, there you go. It, it was responsible for Cinderace's death and uh it survived all the way until the end so it, it would have mattered heavily you know and it sucks because you know it could have been in the final could have been talking about how i won but um make mistakes you make mistakes you live with them you move on uh but derek has been on a roll recently definitely been on a roll i mean 6 0 6 it was 6 2 last week i believe and 6 2 again he's been on a crazy roll lately as has uh the next person the next winner we're talking about um so derek is definitely gonna be a force to be reckoned with um heading into the finals he's been phenomenal all season he's been great his improvement's been incredible to watch um granted i i, I will fully admit and i think i admitted it back then he wouldn't beat me uh I was, i'm the only person who beat them this season who beat him this season and he wouldn't beat me if, if it had gone the timer he would have easily beaten me um so yeah that's uh derek's been great all season and he fully deserves to be in the finals he fully deserves to be in the finals uh he's just been fantastic and again the improvements from last season he he, he just fixed up a lot of his little mistakes and i think that's what made makes him more dangerous this season and then next season who knows he might fix up his team because we, we kind of talked and he even even he i mean ninjask was not the best pick togekiss has not been the best pick um so he could have maybe maybe if he picked two different pokemon that could have served his team a little bit better his team could have been even more dangerous so definitely keeping out for Derek heading into the finals and uh yeah he's been out of roll so he's he's going into the finals which we'll touch on later and the person that will be joining him is the winner of the miami dragonized versus the san diego sylveons matchup uh Wanako gaming won six two uh a pretty convincing performance i feel like he he had a game plan and he executed it perfectly. Charizard walked away with uh, four kills, no deaths in that one. Is Dynamax MVP? And much like I want to point out that Charizard's performance reminds me a lot of Cinderace. Cinderace's only good performance this season against uh, the Iowa Incineroars. I keep hitting my mic. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> the Iowa Incineroars. When Cinderace, it just it just was coming in, getting the kills it needed to get, bouncing out. Although this time around, Charizard actually racked up three straight kills, I believe, because uh, it killed Tentacruel and then it bounced out um, on Amoongus and then it came in and finished Amoongus, which I will point out, uh, there was a, a an air slash flinch on Amoongus that could have been a huge difference because that was a potential toxic onto Charizard, um, which would have put it on a timer, would have probably maybe made a difference. Uh, it, I don't think it would have made a difference to the outcome, maybe to the score, maybe to the score. I don't think it would have made a difference for the outcome though. Um, but I will say Charizard's going to get all the limelight, obviously with the four kills, no deaths. Uh, it just, it just did what it had to do, had the right moveset. But, uh, again, Rillaboom, man, Rillaboom has been uh, easily Miami's best Pokemon this season. Um, it just comes in, gets, it's, it's the utility mon. It's the one that does the dirty work. I think that's why I like it so much. Same as Shuckle. Those two Pokemon just do the dirty work. They get the dirty work. They do what they need to do. They get in, get out. That's why that's what they do. Uh, Rillaboom got a big kill on wall rain, which was going to be a literal wall, a wall rain against Miami. Got the big kill on that. Uh, and then he was, I, I will say me and when I we're talking we trained a bit for for my match against Derek and I you know helped him a bit for his match against San Diego um and he was worried about Draco's ult but he neutralized it Rillaboom neutralized it. It, it it just shut it down uh killed it quickly and uh I mean Rillaboom has easily been uh Miami's best Pokemon this season I mean it's been great it's been fantastic uh Charizard's up there as well Charizard has also been another Pokemon up until this point has kind of just done the dirty work Charizard comes in it's it's the feeler it does you know feels it out kind of sees what uh what the other team's bringing and then it, it makes a sacrifice um so Charizard, Rillaboom, and I would say also Shuckle have been Miami's best Pokemon in my in my opinion. Uh, not necessarily just by kills, but just by their utility and what they've been used for. They've been great. They've been great, absolutely great. Um, 
yeah, it, it just felt like another match that's three straight weeks where Miami just controls the match. Much like Kentucky's heading into the playoffs hot. I mean, Miami's heading into the playoffs hot. They won, I believe it was 6-3 against Philadelphia. I don't feel like looking all the way back because I have to flip through all my pages. Uh, I believe they won 6-3 against Philadelphia, and then they won 6-1 against Philadelphia, and now they won 6-2. So they're also coming into the playoff, I mean, into the, the championship match looking hot as well. Both teams are coming in red hot. Um, but Miami definitely controlled their match. Um... I mean, granted, so did Kentucky. Both teams this week really controlled their matches. It never really looked like the other team was going to come back into it. Um, yeah, again, even if that, let's say that air slash, air, air, slash, air slash flinch doesn't happen. I mean, Charizard goes down, someone else comes in. Like, it's it's really, I don't think it would have made a massive difference. Maybe, because it would have been left. It would have been Zassian, Teleon, Whimsicott. Charizard probably would have died by the time it reached Buzzwall, so maybe Buzzwall could have made a comeback. <sighs> maybe. Um, I don't really, I didn't really see it. Um, I will say the whole, oh, Dynamax is a piece of advice for Tara. Maybe don't Dynamax when your Pokemon's in yellow. Um, we've seen that mistake a couple of times. Um, I know it was getting, you know, deep and it, it, was, a, it was, you gotta kill the Pokemon, but maybe, could have saved it for something else. Uh, what would have been? Well, it's tough because Buzzle was the only other Pokemon left. Um, so it's it's tough. Maybe you weren't expecting the Rock type move either. So I can't, you know, I can't fully fault you there. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm excited to see Tara's team next season because she did well enough this season. I mean, she impressed at multiple points uh, with a team that wasn't even hers. And she made it to the semifinals, you know, which I don't think uh, many people might have been expecting with that team um you know considering it was the redwood meows and they were regularly put to kind of towards the bottom kind of low expectations um but to get to the finals with a team that's not even yours that's impressive or the semifinals um so yeah miami walked away with the 6-2 win in that one uh, a very impressive win uh just kind of a thorough win it was just dominant um i will say i also wanted to point out that charizard did actually go down to 50 hp on the first attack it took it did go all the way down to 50 HP the first attack it took, but it still was able to come in and rack up the kills. It outsped everything else, and because all it, when Charizard killed Tentacle and bounced out, when it bounced back in, it had Amoongus, Ho, -Oh, and Buzzwool to deal with. It outsped all of them. So naturally, I mean, it makes sense that even though it was low health, and it was also Gigantamax that helped. Um, the double air slash and Amoongus uh, without G uh, Gigantamaxing was big because when Ho, -Oh came in. And it Dynamaxed, you know, went up, obviously Dynamaxed, um, or Gigantamax, and got off the max Rockfall, and that's always going to kill uh, half health Ho, -Oh, uh, even if it's not Stab. And then Buzzwool comes in, and Buzzwool's quad weak to, to air, so it was always going to die in the max airstream as well. Um, and yeah, so impressive win from Miami, impressive win from Kentucky, both teams heading into the finals. This is Miami's second second straight year, uh, second straight second straight season into uh heading into the finals so again like i mentioned with the last match miami or, or mentioned earlier miami is trying to uh build a nice little dynasty in the ebl um so i'm very curious with all that now again like i did last week i'm gonna do my little power rankings my personal power rankings um it's tough because i think i'm gonna go three and four first i think san diego takes three la takes four I just made a very stupid mistake and I very much deserve to get last spot in, in any power rankings. There's no way uh, I should be any higher because that was just a terrible rookie mistake um, that definitely should not have happened. Um, so I'm going to put myself in four easily. San Diego can go in third because I don't think their game plan was terrible. I don't think Tara's game plan was terrible, but it just uh, it's just that Miami had a counter pretty much for everything. Uh, I don't know. I'm very curious. Quinaco, if you could put it in the comments down below, uh, was Charizard a main part of your game plan? Um, I think I remember him telling me that it, it, it was a, a, a part, but did you expect it to be as big of a part of your game plan? I guess is the better question. Um, I'm very curious. Let me know down below. So then it becomes tough because I'm going to actually give it to Miami. I'm going to give it to Miami. I'm going to give them number one. I'm going to give Kentucky number two um, because I think Miami, as much as I don't want to take anything away from Derek's win, he, he, he dealt with a team that wasn't, fully prepared for his um and although he he still has to handle business sure um miami was dealing with a prepared team and dealing with the team that was ready um to take on his uh thanks uh ace 
so we're gonna i'm gonna give it to mammy i just feel like he can control guanaco controlled the match better he his kills were, were just sacks really i mean rillaboom rillaboom actually got sludge wave critted so it might not have even died um who knows all right would have probably would have eventually died like he would have let it sack uh, get sacked off same with shuckle he he sacked off shuckle so the kills that he let go weren't really i mean he just kind of let them go uh, i'm sure maybe he would have liked to keep rillaboom a little bit longer but uh it, it just felt like he was controlling the match throughout throughout uh throughout it so uh, we'll go one Miami, two Kentucky, three San Diego, four LA. Uh, and now for the big one, the predictions for the championship match. We have the Kentucky Kinglers versus the Miami Jagonets. I dropped my pen. Uh, <laughs> um, man, this is a tough one. This is a really tough one because these have these two teams have been easily the best throughout the entire season i'd say other teams maybe were hotter at certain points like atlanta uh definitely probably was hotter at certain points throughout the season um i'd say i'd say la i mean i, I won four games in a row i'd say i was on like a nice streak there um but both teams like i said both teams are on hot streets right now they're both sitting on three straight wins um they're both sitting on three big wins i mean total what is total for miami 18 to 18 to 6 and kentucky though 18 to 3 across their last three matches that's impressive that is that is that is impressive that's an average of like a 6-1 scoreline which it obviously isn't true but uh that's very impressive hang on oh my pen um it's very impressive from kentucky um it's i think it's hard because i think both of these teams are going to get in a lot of prep for for this match whether they already i don't know when they're playing i don't know um but i think both teams are going to get in a lot of prep um i'd argue guanaco seems to be the more seasoned battler he seems to be the more experienced and knowledgeable battler um however derek again i mentioned it earlier his improvements have been uh, you know a sight to see i mean you, you've heard it not just from me but from multiple coaches in the, in the league uh, about uh how well derek has improved so it's it's definitely a match where you can't count him out uh derek's team is incredibly powerful i mean dalga alone like you, people focus so much on scenarios but dalga is just a scary pokemon too like it's it's it hits so hard and it's just a, an amazing utility pokemon because of how many moves it can learn how many hits it can take it's just a fantastic utility mon um i'd argue it's just as uh it's it's almost as uh as much of a utility pokemon as cinderace i'd argue because it is a great utility pokemon um not to mention i mean not to mention cinderace obviously uh i will say gunako probably has the advantage in the cinderace department because he had a cinderace so he's obviously going to know its weaknesses um he's obviously going to know how to try and counter it um whether he successfully counters it is is the question right um but then derek also has mimikyu which is a fantastic offensive mon if it's able to get off um some hits Derek also has Primarina, which has proven to be a great mod. Ferrothorn, which is a, a nice wall, though Charizard counters that immediately. Um, I don't see Primarina, I mean, sorry, not Primarina, Togekiss or Ninjas coming, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, so that leaves seven Pokemon. I'm only saying, I'm, I'm sure Gwenaco will probably cross them off too. I don't see them coming against his team. Um, maybe, I mean, maybe Togekiss is the one I could see, but uh yeah i don't really see them coming against the team uh maybe ninjask for buzzwool that's also a thing maybe i mean i don't know i don't know it's the finals i don't see derek being too experimental i don't see either of them being experimental i think they just bring their six best and they just duke it out um and it's gonna come down to move sets and that's and that's and how they're trained and that's really what's gonna come down to um it's a tough one man it's a tough one i think i'm gonna side with derek though I think I'm gonna side with Derek on this one. I just, I just feel like Derek's team is well equipped to, to be utilized in a lot of different ways. You know, like I mentioned, Dialga, Cinderace, uh, even Mimikyu can maybe learn a couple different moves. Salamence can learn a couple different moves. Um, I feel like I feel like I'm gonna back Kentucky on this one. I think Kentucky are gonna walk away with the season two championship. Um, I would not be surprised if Miami won. This is this is like the the closest match we've had to predict all season. I'm I'm saying it now. This is the closest match we've had to predict all season. Um, 
because it's it's so hard to call but i think derek's just on a much better streak right now like i said 18 to 3 scoreline across his last three matches i mean that's that's incredible <laughs> that is incredible and it probably would have been like was that 24 to 6 if he had if i hadn't you know stalled him out so he's doing really well this season and i know miami is too but miami also has gone through i think more struggles than kentucky uh, because Miami went through a nice stretch there where they weren't really in their matches, you know, as much as they are now. Um, and I don't know, it's hard to call because I feel like Renaka will also come up with game plans to throw off Derek. You know, I think he'll come up with a game plan to, to add moves. He'll bring moves to throw off Derek. Um, but Derek, I think he's going to be really prepping this, this week, um, really doing his research. So I think maybe he'll be ready. Maybe he'll have counters to the counters. Um, but. This match, I would, I really don't. If 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 I see a six two six one, I'm gonna be so surprised. Or six zero, I'm gonna be so surprised. I think this is gonna be a six four six five, unless one of them is able to come up with a crazy game plan that just knocks the other one down. But I think I think I'm gonna back Kentucky on this one. I think they walk away with it. Uh, just looking at the teams, um, I think I think Derek is gonna be the season two elite battle league champion that is gonna be an incredible match to watch that's gonna be incredible i i'm excited to see that one um but yeah that's gonna be for this weekly roundup guys we are going to uh well i don't know what i was gonna say turn your attention to saturday all right saturday 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 there are going to be collaborative streams going on a lot of the members of the ebr are going to be streaming um battling each other and doing all that good stuff i can't guarantee i'm gonna be a part of that because they're doing i think at 11 p.m i'm probably gonna be asleep <laughs> so uh they're all gonna be doing that and then they're gonna be raiding the championship match uh I th oh when is it supposed to be uploaded uh 11 p.m pst by the way um i think 1 p.m pst which is like 4 esc i think is when it's supposed to get uploaded um so yeah you guys definitely want to go check that out regardless just keep an eye out on saturday keep an eye out for all that good stuff um and uh yeah so go look uh go look for always my videos the channel we're not going gaming's channel both that's where the championship match is going to be but again go check out all the other coaches in the description because you do not want to miss those streams on saturday uh and obviously just sh show support their way i mean they absolutely deserve it uh and check out timmy's links down below timmy He's not here. He's going to be here next week. Check out his links down below. My links are also down below. Uh, and other good stuff. So I hope you have a fantastic day. And we'll see you next week for the final roundup of season two and my final roundup for the foreseeable future. <laughs> Bye.